Now, once I was in the startup space, I really enjoyed talking to founders, yeah. uh, learning about their dreams, aspirations, yeah. uh, struggles. Mm-hmm. So, what was it? Devanand or Dharmendra? Dharmendra. Anil Kapoor or Jackie Shaw? Jackie Shaw. Harvard or Stanford? That's a very easy one, <laughs> Harvard. <laughs> yeah. I recently met a founder yeah. okay, who's got a 50 crore revenue. Okay. All that he does is that imports plastic bottles from China, huh. he brands it. Personalizes it and sells it in India. One thing that really puts you off. So one thing that really puts me off is a slide which shows how fast they'll become a unicorn. Okay. Okay. Right. When a founder is focused on valuation, yeah, he's not building a business. He's not. And that is not what interests me. So that yeah. completely puts me off, and it's a Tata bye bye. Yeah, yeah. I think Aditya is taking notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Very interesting. Yes, sorry, the cheese didn't cut me. Mostly for the elderly audience, it's more about the convenience, authenticity, uh, etc. Right? Or qual- product quality. For the younger audience, it's more about the marketing, it's more about the look and feel, the aspirational value associated with the products. The plan is to have fun, okay. keep it light-hearted, and yet talk about uh, the things that we're doing. Uh, you know, make it insightful as well for people. A lot of this audience would be startup founders, yes. you know, VCs, and uh, the ecosystem people. So um, I'll obviously introduce you. Uh, everybody knows Nimesh, but yes, an operator, investor, founder, all things combined, and a banker more importantly, and uh, you know, starting his own fund now which is uh, a growth stage fund. So firstly, congratulations. Thank you. The journey is just begun. The journey is just begun. And uh, the idea is that first to ask you, like why get into, you know, having a fund of yourself and uh, not be on the other side where you were before. So it's it's very interesting and it's how your journey unfolds, right? So Mm. if you see historically Mm. as a banker, Hmm. I've always been a public market investor, right? Okay. So that's how my journey in investing always started. And of course, working in the banking environment, hmm. you understand the entire BFSI space very well. Then I transitioned into investing in the unlisted space, okay. right? So because you want to diversify, you want to grow, right? Because Correct. your first choice of investment in equities will be always listed. Correct. Then transition into unlisted space. Then I transitioned into the startup space after mm-hmm. that, right? Because unlisted only has so many opportunities. Correct, now, correct. once I was in the startup space, I really enjoyed talking to founders, yeah. uh, learning about their dreams, aspirations, yeah. uh, struggles. Mm-hmm. So, what was it? And somewhere I used to do a lot of pro bono advisory on mm-hmm. finance and strategy because that okay. is my forte. Yeah, correct. Then over a period of time, I said, you know, uh, India needs uh, uh, an exchange Mm -hmm. kind of a thing for the private market. So that's why we set up Trika. The objective was to ultimately move to a a platform which enables liquidity for all founders, employees, investors. Correct. correct. Uh, So that is something that we did for a pretty long time. Built a lot of relationships in the ecosystem. Yeah. Be it startups, be it founders, Mm -hmm. be it investors, Mm -hmm. angel investors, VC investors, family offices across the country. Yeah. Uh, so then after I moved on from Trika last year, mm-hmm. right, uh, the option was to do what next? What next, yeah. Now if you look at... Uh, uh, like why growth stage, not early stage? Since I think in Trika, uh, it's a let's venture entity, right? I think uh, you've been involved in facilitating a lot of angel investments too. You've been an angel investor too. But uh, now the road ahead is on the growth stage. So firstly, why growth? So. So, at, see, let's say it's an early stage platform, but Trika yeah. was a growth stage platform. Okay. Now, what I saw and when you are in the ecosystem, right, mm. I saw that there are, there are more than 700, 800 early stage funds. Correct. Right? There's not too much differentiators. The only differentiation when you talk to any fund is mm. that, you know, I focus on SaaS and yeah. I focus on enterprise tech, I focus yeah. on deep tech. Yeah. Beyond that, there's not too much of differentiation. Mm-hmm. When I look at growth stage, there are less than 25 funds in the country. In the in India, right? In India, okay. Includes global investors mm-hmm. who typically look at growth stage. So, yeah. and then PE world is very large. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So there was a there was a sweet spot there, mm-hmm. uh, which is what I found as an insider, yeah. uh, that not too many people are focusing on the growth stage, yeah. especially from India. Yeah. Uh, you have largely all global names who do, huh. uh, and we said that it's it's now our time has come. Yeah. We should have an Indian firm. 
Huh. That's why the name is very Indian. One zero eight capital. Okay. Where we focus on growth stage investing in Series B, C, D companies, right? Which is Love where it. there is a lot of dearth of capital. Correct. And you also seen that you know one out of ten companies gets funded at that stage. Yeah. Uh, Post Series A. So Correct. is there something that we can contribute to the ecosystem, right? Absolutely. So that that was the whole idea behind it. Makes sense. Makes sense. And while we are passing by this area, this is a uh, good ground DLF Phase One area. Which is the first sort of area which got established in Gurugram. So you see the houses here are one of the best to see. They look really nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of celebrity houses here. You know, Virat Kohli's house is nearby. The parents live there. Must be all investors and founders. Sure, <laughs> hope so, hope so. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, this is one area which I personally like because of the greenery and everything around. Uh, people don't associate Gurugram much with greenery, but this is the most green area yeah, I mean. of. Good go. I always come on the main road. Yeah. Come yeah. to Cyber City and go. So that's all concrete and you <laughs> all know. All concrete yeah, and all glass yeah. buildings. Correct. All glass. First buildings. time I'm seeing the heart of Gurgaon. Yes, yes. This is the pretty much the heart of Gurgaon and uh, some very good places around as well. We'll pass them. Okay. But yeah, I mean, uh, first uh, now that we were talking about your journey in fund, your name, by the way, there is a namesake. You already have all that. Also, is an investor. So. Um, मन कुछ है नाम में जो नो सो नो सो द निमेश कंपनी इज अ वेरी बिग नेम ही इज बीन अ स्टॉलवर्ड इन द इंडस्ट्री आई स्टार्टेड जेएम फाइनेंशियल ओनर ऑफ दैट एंड आई थिंक बिल्ड अ बिग इंस्टीट्यूशन करेक्ट वी नो ईच अदर ओके बियॉन्ड दैट इट डजंट गो सो वी आर वी कम बैक फ्रॉम द वी कम फ्रॉम द सेम विलेज सॉर्ट ऑफ अ थिंग बट नॉट रिलेटेड अच्छा यू कम बैक फ्रॉम सेम विलेज या योर होम टाउन इंटरेस्टिंग वेयर इज दैट In Gujarat near the coast, okay. near Somnath Temple, Veeraval Mangrol. Okay. Are there more Nimesh companies there? <laughs> <laughs> It's a very small community, so okay. almost okay. everybody knows each other. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I thought uh, good name. Do you know that you're doing something in funding or opening your own fund or be a banker with the name like that? <laughs> It sounds like that, right? So uh, before we even talk growth stage, I think uh, since your journey also has been very interesting, you were one of the earlier. Angel investors like 2014. Not a lot of people invested, but yes, I think that was still early days in the ecosystem. Uh, I would love to first know in the last 10 years, odd years, you personally have invested into 60 plus companies. Uh, what has changed? And uh, you know, now that we don't see a lot of angel investors being involved, uh, that definitely has changed. But what else has changed? No, I think the uh, in in those days it was uh, very difficult to get. deals mm-hmm. right. uh today the world is very different yeah. i think you have a lot of platforms which provide you with deals so yeah. deal access has more or less you can say democratized mm-hmm. uh and the other thing is in those days it was largely mm-hmm. uh you had to be in that inner circle ecosystem to Correct. get deals to yeah. to get any kind of deal yeah uh I think most of it remains unchanged in terms of the deal flow. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best of deals get consumed in a very small ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there are a lot of enablers that we have. Like, as I said, we already have around seven, eight hundred early stage funds. Correct. Uh, we have angel networks with ten yeah. thousands of investors. Yeah. And not one or two, but we have maybe around six, seven of them in India. Correct. And more and more are coming up. I mm-hmm. just heard one more wants to start. Yeah. Uh, so. So I think that is good for the ecosystem. I think more and more awareness about this asset class, yeah. more and it brings about more and more awareness, more and more knowledge comes to play. Correct. Very helpful. Very helpful. I think to all the founders who are listening in and looking for that first angel check. Uh, let's pause and do something fun as well. Uh, I, we have a little bit of a Karan Johar sort oh, of wow. segment. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'll just uh, can I pick the question? The rapid fire. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's any very easy. It's not uh, something you just have to choose from mm. both, right? Both I'll nice. give you two names, and you just choose whatever thing that comes to your mind. Okay, the first one. This is uh, you know Devanand or Dharmendra. Dharmendra. Lovely. Anil Kapoor or Jackie Shroff. Jackie Shroff. Okay. Mumbai or Delhi. Mumbai. Easy. <laughs> uh, Gujarati cuisine or Mughlai. Mughlai. Okay. And some words on Indian accent. Because you went there, no, oh, I think uh, worth the hype. Yeah, yeah, definitely you have okay. to be there and have the tasting menu. Okay, definitely worth the hype. Worth the hype. Okay, lovely. Uh, D two C or SaaS? SaaS. 
ओके क्लाइमेट टेक और ड्रोन टेक क्लाइमेट टेक हार्वर्ड और स्टैनफोर्ड दोज वेरी इजी वन हार्वर्ड बट या व्हाई हार्वर्ड आई मीन फॉर समबडी ट्राइंग टू गेट इनटू बोथ बिकॉज़ आई एम एन एलएम या यू आर एन एलएम फॉर श्योर यू बायस बट ऑन अ वेरी ऑब्जेक्टिव पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू नो आई थिंक इफ यू हैव टू चूज वन यू गो विद विद अ ब्रांड विद अ नेम व्हिच ओपन्स डोर्स या and and uh, there is nobody else like harvard yeah. who opens doors for you yeah okay you heard it and uh, more time or more money more time lovely and favorite movie not a big big uh, movie buff yeah i think i'll pass that you pass no movie comes to your mind some movie any movie i just watch anything random yes okay so there is no favorite favorite movie favorite song uh i think diamonds by rihanna yeah yeah uh, remember the time from yes. michael jackson awesome from the lp standpoint also i think i would love to know you know indian somebody i was speaking to uh, said because you know we also do decks for fun so they were saying you know uh, largely the narrative that is missing right now in a lot of decks that i see fun decks is you know why uh, an indian fund is better than a global fund when an lp is investing right mm. not just because india story is better everybody knows i think all the people yeah. talk about that but your thoughts on that why an indian fund versus a global fund if you are an lp based out of the valley have about 10 million to put mm. any thoughts there so so i think see if you if you look at it always uh, india is a is a very different market right mm. like like it's unlike the west mm. uh, a lot of things that have been copied from the west have mm. worked but there in been 10x of that which have not worked yeah uh, so you need a lot of on ground expertise knowledge mm. uh, someone who knows the system very well yeah and that's where i would say a person stationed here the team which is here right from the top Mm-hmm. uh works pretty well yeah right because you have to get through uh the, the this entire indian ecosystem and whenever any any uh, country is developing mm-hmm. right, there is a lot of evolution that happens correct it's everything is not established that you can just have processes and uh you know flows that work correct so you need to be quite on your toes uh, mm-hmm. quite iterative and you can, maybe there are not time, there are times when you cannot wait for mm-hmm. your ho in some us or european country to come back correct and that agility is also required yeah. so so i think that is where indian funds will in the future score over global funds mm-hmm. but of course money bags are global funds yeah. right indian funds are still coming to the fore i think yeah. indian investors mm-hmm. uh, are uh, getting more and more into this ecosystem and that is what is going to help the domestic uh, capital flow yeah. and domestic fund managers correct correct so i think if you are an lp why invest in 2108 Uh, so so i think as an lp and be it 108 or any other indian fund yeah. i think uh, the logic is pretty clear mm. the person who's running the fund mm. should have been in this ecosystem for quite a while yeah. they know uh, the entire uh, ecosystem not only the startup ecosystem mm. founders investors but beyond that yeah they know on ground pulse if okay. you're investing for example in a lending company mm-hmm. right it's a tech lending company now from the outside mm. bn pillar has worked very well in one country yeah so of course you want to replicate that but yeah. india has a very different kind of mindset mm mm-hmm. a different kind of way customers behave mm-hmm. and that's what you need that indian uh, person to go for right. who understands the market yeah right and uh, so it's one is about understanding the investment opportunity yeah for which i think anybody uh, anywhere in the world can do yeah. but i think it is about uh, investing in the right uh, geography investing mm-hmm. in the right mindset of people that is where the domestic fund manager comes to the fore okay and the experience and knowledge is invaluable yeah so that's why you know uh, like choose a domestic manager which has a lot of experience from ground up yes that makes a lot of difference and what is unique about 108 is that uh, as i mentioned in the beginning i have been on the public side mm-hmm. the unlisted side and the private side so yeah. the bridge that can be created between public and private is something very unique about 108 108 absolutely i think that's a very interesting one and where do you see you know uh, that bridge helps the founders like specifically uh, if you are looking at founders how does that bridge help them as well 
so a very simple thing mm. right today a lot of founders mm. they go for mentoring to people in the ecosystem mm. right that again you got your linear line of thinking mm. a particular startup became a unicorn with this line of thinking and yeah. that is what you do yeah. what we are trying to do differently is that we created a operating board mm. operating mentor board of of real operators yeah. of large traditional mm. corporates mm. right they come with hardcore experiences of running 100x corporates right okay. today founders are able to take their companies from 0 to 1 mm. 1 to 10 okay. now 10 to 100 mm. one of the way is to you know get mentoring from someone who's already done 100 in the startup ecosystem and you have 108 unicorns for that yeah in addition to that what also helps you is if you are able to talk to people who have taken their companies from 100 to 1000 as well mm-hmm. right and that's where we have got an operating mentor board okay. of experts mm-hmm. uh, in different fields with mm-hmm. their knowledge and expertise yeah. who will guide them and okay. i think that is something which is unique about us amazing and these operators that you're talking about are these uh, across the globe or indian or uh, largely all indian yeah uh, and largely working because our fund is also india focused you know to invest in india and as i said you need the on ground expertise yeah. so largely so we got a finance person we got hr yeah. you know all of those things and what are the kind of companies you are investing into uh, any any thesis you want to talk about like what is so it's very simple companies you, you know companies so focused on doing dhanda uh-huh. basically execution gujarati speaking in you yeah <laughs> execution yeah. Yeah. scalability yeah. and sustainability i think there are three keywords that i have okay uh, and you know primarily should be making money or going to be able to make money quickly and okay. not burning cash okay. very simple okay making money if they are growth stage uh, is it assumed usually they will be already making money revenue has to be there yeah. right they are already right. making good amount of revenue correct uh, profitability may or may not be there yeah. but of course visibility will be there okay right? because with all the now you know uh, recent uh, uproar around ai the buzz around ai uh, what do you think is a good growth stage startup working on ai and if they are right now starting what should be their path in general so honestly if you are an ai investor i think you should largely invest in early stage okay i strongly believe uh, ai to to be to become something that is very useful and very material yeah uh will take around 4 to 5 years okay so i think anybody who's got innovative idea in ai today in mm-hmm. the early stage is where you should write a check and we have a small seed pool to okay. write early stage checks oh you do okay. yes very Lovely. small seed pool for seed certain, pool guys okay. for certain companies uh-huh. which we really like the founders who are building okay. something for the future okay uh, and very innovative okay. right uh, so that's where i think uh, a seed pool helps yes and the ai will take around 4 to 5 years in any field yeah. to to become pretty strong understood so we'll also uh, have another contestant coming up here on the show shark tank on the wheels <laughs> sort of <laughs> but who's uh, writing the check who's writing the check this we just have an investor and founder nobody's writing the check she's already not taken my memo and told him to not research too much <laughs> went ahead and did the linkedin request but good good chap i mean i think uh, the idea Thank was you. to Yeah, have these people hear from somebody like you, and uh, while they are building, because a lot of it is guidance also, right? There is now structured guidance by a lot of incubators out there and everything, but still, there's sometimes you get lost. There's too much going on. Way to go. Just like Google, right? There's too uh, much information. Now there's too much information, right? Earlier there were lack of options. Now there's too much information, and that is also harmful. हाँ मतलब see if you are a founder in a D2C space. For example, now D2C की एक तो line ही थोड़ी blur हो गई है. Now people are using D2C in all sort of ways, right? Including trading businesses. हाँ, I was there at an event the other day. Uh, a big chocolate brand based out of US is getting an award, gold award in you know personalized marketing in a D2C category. मैं कहा, what is this man? How is this D2C? Then I, you realize. I that recently met a founder yeah. who's got a 50 crore revenue. Okay. All that he does is that imports plastic bottles from China. Huh. He brands it, huh. personalizes it, and sells it in India. Plastic bottles. Yeah, water bottles. Okay. So that is again a brand uh, that can be D two C because is he selling directly or yeah, through but a channel? Yeah, but somewhere you also need to have. Uh, I always believe that it needs to be a heart, right? Mm-hmm. Like you are, if you just remove all the riffraff, mm-hmm. he's a pure trader. 
या करेक्ट ओ येस्टरडे ओनली आई हैड योर बिकानेर वाला का चाट अच्छा अब बिकानेर वाला इज ऑल ओवर हियर व्हिच वन डिड यू गो टू द चनक्के वन नियर द चनक्के मॉल नो नो नियर द वन इन डीएलएफ मॉल वन ऑफ द डीएलएफ मॉल अच्छा डीएलएफ एंबियंस आई थिंक हाउ वाज योर दिल्ली ट्रिप सो फार हाउ इज द दिल्ली इकोसिस्टम Pretty Versus good. Bangalore. Pretty good. Idea. Delhi NCR, I would say. No, so thoughts. so if you know the numbers, huh. right? Uh, Bangalore has the highest number of startups. Correct. Delhi comes second. So Delhi, yeah. I mean Delhi. Delhi, Delhi yeah. Noida, yeah. Gurgaon, everything combined. Yeah. That comes second. Correct. And then third is Mumbai. Yeah. So this ecosystem is also thriving. Lot of good startups, founders. Yeah. I had some good meetings, good event I attended. Yeah. So. There's one question I missed asking you. Like, what is that? If you had a lot of money. What is that one outlandish thing that you will do once you get a lot of money and nobody is judging you? Personal only, ah, huh? no investing. Uh, so basically, you want to know what will be your boy toy? Ah, uh, you yeah, you can say that. Yes. So I'm more of a sea person. Ah. Uh, uh, I love water, so would love to have an island. Island, ah, uh, that's something. And any, that's outlandish. Yeah, any, yeah, that's outlandish. Any area that you figured already. Where would that island be? Depends on how much money you make, right? Hundred million yeah. or a billion. That's true. That's true. And your investment philosophy in three words. You told the three things you like, but uh, in three words, if you have to describe your investment philosophy, right from the early days, so far that has stayed. So uh, governance, hmm. founder, hmm. and growth. Governance, founder, growth. Okay, lovely. So when you say governance, I know a lot of people. See it as different ways, but talk a little bit about that because that's a very important piece now, especially in the funding winter so, and all that, right? The governance has become. I think I would really say important. there are uh, three pillars to governance. Right? Mm-hmm. One is transparency. Okay. I think it's very important, mm. uh, and that is where if I were sitting across with a founder, I judge them on these parameters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so transparency is one. Okay. Uh, trust. Okay. Right, if we able to trust the other person, mm-hmm. uh, which is very important, and creating trust is not an easy thing. Yeah. And third is integrity of the founder. Correct. Right. And many times we found founders falter somewhere mm-hmm. or the other. Yeah. Uh, whether the person is so so it clearly tells you whether the person is building a business for the short term or the long term. Okay. And I would back people who are building for the long term. Okay, lovely. We have a new guest on the show, and uh, this is our office, by the way. And I told oh, him to, to pick office, it up. Sir. Yeah, told him to pick it up. Hi, Chetan. Welcome, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. Hi, Aditya Nimesh. This is Hi. Nimesh. Nimesh, Hi. meet Hi. Aditya. So, firstly, uh, you know, there's a fine on you because you broke the rule and sent the LinkedIn request uh, last time. Oh. Uh, surprise, रखना <laughs> था. <laughs> surprise element तो आपने खत्म कर दिया. नहीं मैं तो डेली इतने लोगों को भेजता रहता हूँ आई गेस आई जस्ट ट्रक माई लक आपने मेरे को हिंट्स भेजे थे हिंट्स भेजे थे तो ई फिगर इट आउट आई डेंट गिव द नेम आउट सी इवन यू आई गिव यू स्लाइट हिंट्स राइट सो आई टू हिम वुड लव टू नो व्हाट हिंट्स ही गिव यू अबाउट मी नहीं मैंने तो खैर आप क्योंकि मेरे बारे में तो देखो उतना नहीं है जितना आपके बारे में नीड टू सी या तो मैं नाम देखा पीतल में बोला ये मैं तो उधर ही समझ गया बिकॉज़ ही कनेक्टेड द डॉट्स राइट But ठीक है now you have हाँ if you look at it for yeah. finding about him that was much more difficult because portfolio exactly. company से brass D two C में I don't think we have more competition correct yeah. correct I sh- I just sent him like six seven of your portfolio companies and okay. told him कि he invest in D two C space so uh, just be there बाकी पता नहीं कैसे ढूंढा ये लोग founders these days you know right founders are very intelligent I told you so now you have uh, two minutes he has uh, a bag full of money now pitch आदित्य इन जनरल इन जनरल यार चलो विदाउट अपार्ट फ्रॉम मनी एज वेल आई तो वुड लव टू पिच अबाउट पीपल एवरीवेयर सो या बेस प्लीज प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ आई वाज गोना डू दैट बट आई वांट यू टू फर्स्ट डू इट श्योर श्योर सो बेसिकली आई एम आदित्य आई एम द फाउंडर ऑफ पीपल और हाउ आई कॉल आई लाइक टू कॉल माय सेल्फ एज द बर्तन वाला एट पीपल सो आई सेल ब्रास कॉपर कांसा किचनवेयर कुकवेयर प्रोडक्ट्स एंड यू नो फॉर अस दिस डिड नॉट एक्चुअली स्टार्ट एज अ ब्रांड As a D2C brand, it actually started as a college project in SRCC. We were actually doing this as an enactus project there, and our idea was to just impact this community of artisans who make these brass, copper, kansa utensils, mm-hmm. right? And then eventually we saw that yeah, this has potential. Hai. This is something that has a lot of scope. You know, let's take it outside of college, build it up as a brand, right? So that's how we started doing a few things. Started modernizing the design. Started taking these products global. Right and uh, eventually last last year we set up our first offline store in uh, GK1 M Block Market. 
in delhi so i love the store yes uh, our idea is to you know build that brand that stands for authenticity and artisanal based products you know and the ayurvedic mantra that you know you should cook in brass drink in copper and eat in kansa uh, so yeah that's what yes. we do we essentially sell these ayurvedic utensils you know to shift back people to the right choices instead of the easy choices that they took over their lifetime amazing amazing i actually have one of my products as well this is something that i carry with me ki chalo jahan investor mil jaye kuch mil jaye product leke chalte hai kisi ko bechna ho to wo bhi hai so yeah this is one of our oh, marquee nice. products a copper i love this i have this at my place yes so yeah this is a copper glass which you can use to drink water and it's suggested right ki itne time purane zamane se log bolta hai ki raat ko copper mein pani store kar and you should drink in the morning so a very lame question i have इसमें खाली पानी से पी सकते हैं कि और कुछ भी डाल सकते हैं इसमें पानी पी सकते हैं सिर्फ इट्स सो हमारे पास ब्रास ग्लास है यू कैन यूज दैट फॉर एनीथिंग वी इवन हैव अ ब्रास कॉकटेल ग्लास दैट यू कैन यूज फॉर अल्कोहल सो सी देयर इज दिस ड्रिंक आल्सो राइट मॉस्को म्यूल मॉस्को म्यूल सो दैट गोस इन कॉपर ग्लास कॉपर ग्लास बट मोस्ट ऑफ दीस कॉपर ग्लासेस यू नो दैट वी दैट यू सी इन द मार्केट दोस आर नॉट प्योर कॉपर ग्लास इसमें स्टील इनसाइड यस दैट इज द कैच दैट्स वेयर वी फिट इन for authentic based products so that is the biggest problem you know in the industry ki people logo ke paas demand hai logo ko chahiye ye products but it's a super unorganized industry so most of the products that are there in the market are non authentic do problem hote hain ya to now i know from where to get yes chetan in fact if you don't have a particular map main to bolta hu ab gk store tak hi le chalo na ah why not why not wohi acha na raste mein ek pura tour ho jayega idea ho jayega brand ke bare mein and at the end you have the store where Luckily, you can see the products uh, you know uh, first time you told me about it i had also asked rinda to go she loved the place she also liked the part that how you bringing the whole experience out also right it's not just about just selling the products but also about uh, giving that experience in the store so in their store which i recommended right if, mm. if those guys can also go they should go they are done uh, they are in the hotel. but their store has this whole experience also not just the products but you know how you cook in it uh, so they invite so we have a there. kitchen we have a dining table set up there we also have uh, the cutouts of the raw material of these metals so that people can touch and feel oh, wow. you know those see the benefits uh, coffee corner so it's a 800 square feet store and uh, we have created an experience this is in gk yeah and but talk about that right let's let's talk also uh, you know about the whole omni channel experience so i think so i think what we can call it for d2c is the digital model works very well so yeah. that is physical plus digital mm. uh so i think just beyond the product right mm. people want to have a look and feel of what they are buying they want that entire experience as you rightly said we have a entire experience store yeah. right? they want to see what goes into it mm. right and and it's uh, as you as you know while we were talking you mentioned that there are the glasses in which you get most comfortable inside is steel outside is copper no? yeah. now that is itself telling you right that is not a product right product mm-hmm. you you go to buy proper glasses yeah. proper copper glasses and you get something else yeah. so i think that is where when you show showcase their entire process showcase their entire journey mm-hmm. which is where it builds in trust and which is something you were discussing before correct trust is very important trust is important and yeah. that is where it builds trust and that is where it brings in sales now so it's not only about So yes uh, till now what we have seen is it's all about marketing and distribution mm. and i think now with more and more awareness coming mm. more and more people being uh, uh, knowledgeable consumers mm-hmm. i think uh, you need a good mix of digital for it for any kind of business to succeed i don't know yeah, your... yeah i think he obviously because you started so i love to know why you started yes. you know the store part because not many founders do that so for for us you know if you look at our industry and yeah, if you look at utensils or bartans right people have always it has predominantly been an offline industry right like i have never seen my parents go online and search for a tawa or a kadhai yeah. right so it's predominantly been an offline industry and when we started seeing that traction on our website mm-hmm. and eventually humne kya kiya tha na we had set up our own office come display space in panchkula okay. right so we set up a small shelf there as well okay. and we eventually saw people coming in and you know once they came in there the average order value of the customers there was 20000 okay. right because unke liye kya hota tha when they see this when they see that Seeing like in your case uh, yeah helped you a lot too right uh, like nimesh nimesh mentioned right yeah. that uh, the touch and feel factor adds a lot of trust to yeah. the products and the entire purchasing experience uh-huh. 
so that really added up for us as well and then we thought that you know let's open up a store in delhi because a lot mm. of people from delhi are mm. telling that you know they would want to shop for our products and considering that you know specially mm. where we are operating in a very high value category yeah. uh, their establishing trust becomes all the more important right because people have higher expectations they think a lot more before making that purchase right so that's why if you look, compare our aov between our online and an offline platform mm. it's drastically different like yeah. on offline has 4x aov of online okay. and eventually you know what how we look at it is that at the end of the day as a consumer brand you have to be present everywhere right, right. ki uh, you can't create a competition between your consumer you have to give your consumer the entire convenience that it should be very easy for them to shop your products from your website or amazon or an offline store whatever is more convenient to them but is that what's exciting your investors as well the people you're talking to uh, like what is working and what is not let's be candid there as well uh, what do you think is a challenge right now at your stage uh, you know to talk to investors and you know uh, talk about so primary for a d2c right yeah primary for so a d from d2c standpoint i mean i'll want to ask both was you so when i see a lot of founders uh, in the d2c space and largely say even if you take food and beverage businesses yeah. and stuff like that I think they are so passionate and they are so driven by the product they have created. Yeah. Uh they forget that for a D2C business to succeed it is much beyond the product. Product is important yes. Yeah. So equally important is your marketing and distribution strategy. Yeah. Right. Equally important is your as uh, Rita rightly pointed out the physical strategy. Yeah. Because ultimately that business is about trust. Today I think uh the most successful or the best example for this uh, hmm. D2C business would be Titan. correct right there is blind trust yeah right you are a repeat customer at tanishk correct why because you have blind trust yeah. that the product you are getting is genuine is the right correct. thing yeah. and is the best price product yeah how can you create uh, that flavor in d2c is the yeah. is the biggest challenge yeah you know and lot of founders 9 out of 10 get stuck at product yeah but i have created an excellent product it will sell itself yeah. it does not the reality is very different yeah. so that's what i see as the biggest challenge for founders what do you see when you are pitching to investors where do uh, where are the blockers right now in your story that yeah, comes it, in i i think uh, it become for us you know personally it, sometimes it becomes slightly tricky for them to convince about how big the market is mm. essentially because uh, they come from a very good pov that you know they have to mainly a lot of uh, the investors look at the total tam right uh, before investing and uh, for us you know uh, even we are starting out we are first time entrepreneurs we are trying to you know experiment with the industry we are learning along the way right like yeah. in the entire process of uh, fundraising as well it's it has been a learning process right. entirely right because you meet so many people you get to hear so many perspectives right, right? Uh, so that's what we try to uh, you know establish as well like nimesh mm-hmm. said it's all about trust you know so we have yeah, yeah. to gain their trust as well into telling them that you know we do not have clear idea of how big the tam is but we will figure it out right okay. even if how much big the tam is yeah. we know how to fit ourselves in there and eventually we have we look at it more from a global pov rather than just looking at an india pov because if you look at the consumers as well both uh, consumers outside india and within india think very differently yeah. so for us how we try to tackle that challenge is that we got to find reports and considering that you know it's a very unorganized and what's the split right now because you touched upon it like export versus just for india. just for our brand hmm. uh, we do 75% sales within india 25% outside 25%. india and interestingly you know we also shared something some days back on our linkedin as well that yeah. we got a single order of 4500 dollars from yeah. a customer directly on our website how much outside of india 4500 dollars yes lovely directly based outside of india no prior communication right yeah. and it's a, not a specific special website that we have created yeah. it's actually just a copy paste of indian website yeah. so that's why we also saw the potential and you know like i was mentioning it's a very unorganized market so you don't easily find reports Correct. of you know the tam calculation done yeah. on our industry but what we were able to find out was that uh in 2021 around 20000 crores of brass and copper was exported wow. from india Uh, from the muradabad sellers right so that gives us a starting you. point yes lovely so from now that we talking uh, investment directly head on with the investor uh, where has the money dried up in d2c i mean not hearing a lot of deals uh, is that because the earlier deals were too easy or where do you see now the course correction happening and what should then obviously a founder look for now so i think the first thing that a founder should look for is customer first mm-hmm. and creating the trust of the customer yeah 
I think most of the D2C brands may be driven by, uh, I would not completely blame the founder. Yeah. The equal blame should be on the investor. Yeah. Uh, they were just chasing growth yeah. and getting new and new customers. Correct. I think, is that the secret sauce to g- creating a large business? My answer is no. Okay. Right? You have to go deeper into the wallet of the customer. Yeah. You have to create that kind of trust that he is a repeat customer. I just don't want to grow my top line. I want to grow the top line the right way. Yeah. And that is where uh, I think somewhere the system faltered. Mm. Right? And I see that cost correction happening now. I think a lot of focus is going on building the businesses the right way. Yeah. Right? Just go back 50 years. That's how businesses were built. Yeah. Right? You businesses were built on trust. It takes time as well right, to build exactly. trust. You can't build it overnight. So I cannot have 100% growth month on month. Correct. I wouldn't even expect 100% growth month on month. Yeah. So I think that is where the ecosystem faltered. Yeah. And the right course correction is happening now. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing very good uh, D2C businesses yeah. across the seg- sectors. I'm seeing good businesses, but D2C as well. Mm-hmm. And founders are coming with the right story. Yeah. They have realized that you know what sells and what does not sell. Correct. Right. Uh, what is your favorite brand now that we're talking that? Uh, that you see. So I use it. a lot of products. Okay. So be it Swami cocktail, Swami. Swami uh, Tonic water yeah. or Nagin sauce okay. or sorcery yeah. brand of you know the dips. Yeah, yeah. So we use everything. Okay. Right. Uh, but I'm not invested in any of those, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I'm invested. Why did you stop? Because you invested early on in M caffeine. I mean, there must be yeah. some reservation. That's why you stopped, right? So. So so I realized that especially in food and beverage business, mm. uh, which is largely D2C, is that it takes. Uh, a different level of expertise to grow from 20 crores to 100 crores mm-hmm. uh, and especially because of what we touched upon earlier yeah. the founder is co- only focused on the product uh, he is just trying to create a better product yeah. somewhere I also tell them the boss product can be a little mediocre it's all about marketing and distribution Correct. you do appeal the right way and appeal the right customer yeah. uh, that is what they miss and yeah. that's why they get lost at the 20 crore number yeah. uh, very few have been able to reach the 100 crore number mm-hmm. Uh, and beyond that, to go beyond that has again been a very big challenge. Yes. So I would invest at a very early stage yeah. uh, when they are, you know, in a few lakhs, mm-hmm. uh, but not at the growth stage. So one of the things we are not doing from the fund is investing in food and beverage businesses. Okay. So the, your fund is not investing in that. Okay. That's a cross. Okay. And what thing that really puts you off in founders who come and invest? And it could be across any, but yes, yeah. one thing that really puts you off. So one thing that really puts me off is a slide which shows how fast they'll become a unicorn. Okay. Okay. Right. When a founder is focused on valuation, yeah. he's not building a business. He's not. And that is not what interests me. So that yeah. completely puts me off, and it's a Tata bye bye. Yeah, me. yeah. I think Aditya is taking notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Very interesting. Yes, sorry, this is not done. But uh, from your perspective, uh, Aditya, what puts you off in an investor? Let's talk that as well, right? It's not that the community is perfect, right? And, uh, what puts you off? So I would say, you know what, uh, like even when we started our fundraise, yeah. uh, one of the main thesis for us was that, you know, we wanted to look for people who could, whose values could assi- align with us, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I guess that's why even when I was chatting with you, I told that, you know, how I really would want to get people on board, yeah. not just looking at the money yeah. or not just looking at the pedigree that they are at, but yeah. also looking at, you know, if they're aligning on the vision that we want to do, because uh, we have heard a lot of stories where, you know, mm-hmm. founders have started doing a lot of things just to chase valuation, like yeah. Nimesh said, yeah. right? And then they end up uh, diluting the core of their business, that yeah. why they eventually started. Yeah. And, you know, as Nimesh rightly said, yeah. you know, uh, I was chatting with uh, Sashank as well, the founder of Whole Truth. Okay. And he made a very interesting observation that there are only two kinds of consumer brands. Okay. They're either brands that last for 50 years or yeah. the brands that die out within five years. Mm-hmm. There's nothing really in between, right? Yeah. So time becomes the biggest moat for consumer brands in most right. cases where if they are not just looking to grow fast to become a unicorn, but focusing more on their core customers, building strong unit economics, building a strong business. Yeah. So that really matters a lot. And that's why, you know, when we were talking to investors, mm-hmm. I was really focused on the fact that, you know, if you if you will push us for fast growth, yeah. you know, by which will come at a cost of uh, very hampered unit economics for us, then that's not what we are looking at because this is how we are looking at our journey. Correct. We might grow slow, we might not, let's say, touch 50 crores next year, we might touch 20 crores, yeah. but we want to ensure that we are growing on a sustainable path and not rapidly growing yes. without any unit economy. Some more questions, uh, a little fun as well. Uh, now that we've asked the straightforward, serious ones, 
but uh, you both have been from obviously good institutions coming from Harvard, uh, you at undergrad level coming from SRCC, everybody knows the institutions. So how does that help? How have you still, you know, in your case, it might be a different way, but I mean, how does that help in your journey? Should people be looking at, you know, these things as well? And uh, how do you basically make the most out of it is the right question. I don't think so. Now it matters as much the IIT and the IIMs. Right? All meeting. of those matter because it's all about the brains that go there. Yeah. Right? Because the best of brains will go to best of institutions in yeah. the country, outside the country. Yeah. I think ultimately what helps is your is the network that you build while yeah. you are studying because mm -hmm. that is your real relationship that you build, right? Correct. Rest all that you build in life is all give and take. Yeah, correct. Uh, but the real core relationships are built yeah. when you are studying, mm -hmm. and that is that ecosystem, that is the network that will ultimately mm -hmm. help you in life mm -hmm. as you go ahead in life, right? Ten years yeah. down the line, twenty years down the line, everybody will be CEO somewhere. Correct. Right. So I think that is the network which you will be able to leverage and grow from. Yeah. So that is, I think, the biggest takeaway for anybody. What about you, Aditya? Uh, I guess the same, uh, you know, as Nimesh mentioned, it's all about the network because, you know, when uh, I went first, so for me, I came from Odisha, right? Yeah. So after class 10th, I did my schooling also in Delhi from DPS RK Puram. So when I entered into that institution as well, yeah. that was a major breakthrough moment for me yeah. because I could see the entire India being there, yeah. right? And when you come from your institute, class 10th, that, yeah. you know, you are the topper in your class, you are yeah. the most... Uh, intelligent or smartest brains there but when you get into such high quality institutes right yeah. you notice everyone is of that level right and that pushes you to improve yeah. even further so I would say the most important thing for us was that you know all in all these institutes mm -hmm. let's say if we talk about SRCC baat kare, uh -huh. so the teachers the curriculum everywhere is the same we all have to give the same examination you know that DU sets all the colleges yeah. may it be any tier 3 college or tier 1 college right yeah. what really matters are the kind of individuals you meet there you know yeah. The kind, that pushes you for competition because I remember kya hota tha ki, you get to see so many people around you doing so many things yeah. that you yourself get motivated right yeah. that you know I have to do this I have to get better than what I was and eventually the alumni network plays a huge role you know for me as well yeah. when uh, I was doing a fundraise yeah. four months back we had that SRCC alumni network and I could get connects mostly through that and uh, eventually you know when we also recently started out yeah. and uh, just to check for founders from SRCC yeah. we thought there might be just five or six because we rarely hear founders coming from SRCC but we eventually got 80 folks on the group even the founder of magic pen is from SRCC okay. from burger Rama is from SRCC See, all so that helps right that yeah. helps quite a lot because you know at the end of the day networking gets you a lot of things that money can't directly and that is the biggest takeaway from these uh, good institutes network is your net worth at network the end of the day. Yeah. yeah so uh, and what about now the hustle culture also right like uh, i asked uh, nimesh a question some time ago more money or more time uh, was that more time because you like things now a little easy now you've at a certain level or like the hustle culture which now has become it's glamorized also what do you think about that? So hustle is required mm. to deliver your passion. Yeah. But hustle is not required for shortcuts. Yeah. And everybody is taking shortcuts. Everybody wants to become rich very fast. Correct. Right? And that is where it's wrong. Yeah. You just give it time, mm. let it play out the right way. And that's why I said more time. Yeah. More time will bring more money on its own. Correct. Right? You don't have to fight for it. Exactly. But yeah. you do things the right way. Yeah. You build an institution. Mm. And that is where uh, you, have the, you should have the right balance of hustle. Right? It's like salt. Yeah. You need salt in food. Correct. But if you have then you are gone. Yeah, yeah. You can't even eat it. Correct. Same goes for hustle culture. You need yeah. you need hustle, but yeah. the right quantity of hustle. Right the moment it goes beyond that and you yeah. start doing, hustle becomes jugad, ah. you are gone. You are <laughs> yeah. a short term creator yeah. and it's finished. That's a good way to put it. As long as hustle is following your passion but not becomes a jugad to make things happen quickly. What about you, yeah, Aditya? That, no, that's completely age, true. Especially you know, uh, I think it's uh, glamorized a lot, but how do you balance yeah. work life? I, I, you know, I also personally feel in a way that balance should definitely be there. Yeah. And you know, apart from being glamorized, I think now it's being like a lot of words are coming against the hustle culture more yeah. from specifically my generation, right? Yeah. That anyone puts out any content based showing slight hustle, yeah. they protest, right? Yeah. So I think that is also something which is 
wrong, right? Because people just want a proper work-life balance at every stage, right? I think it also that depends. That you can get if you are passionate. Correct. Uh, a passionate person works 24 by 7. Absolutely. Yeah. The passionate person works whenever it is required to work, right? Whenever his commitment is required, right? And I don't know why people are just at any stage, right? They're starting up and they want a very comfortable life. But startups are about sacrifices at some stage, right? It might mean that you might have to hustle now and maybe you can earn up the rest against the hustle you put in earlier. Yeah. So it's not something that you have to make a mantra or make a formula that you have to, you know, hustle 24-7 into 365. Correct. But it's something that if required, you should have the capacity to put that amount of hard work in as well. And you can't expect everything to come at the plate. Absolutely. I think it, all that, there's a fine line, right? Hard work and hustle. Uh, matlab hustle is okay, but we are glamorizing it at the expense of your employees, their mental state right. of mind. That's when it, I think, stretches it a little. So, good to know point of view from both ends. Uh, not to make uh, an image sound very old, but uh, <laughs> since you are at different spectrum also, just founders uh, at different level, how do you see you know, how do you see yourself different than somebody like Nimesh running a startup uh, versus you? Where do you see, uh, you know, uh, your strengths are or your, your weakness are compared to? You know, one interesting insight that I share across with a lot of folks is that if you look at my particular startup or my industry, my product is for people above the age of 35 or 40. Correct. Right. Yeah. That is my target audience. Yeah. And a lot of other folks that I meet, you know, yeah. much experienced folks uh, who are running their startup in their late 30s, late 40s, they usually have a younger audience to cater to. Yeah. You know, maybe in the fashion segment, food and beverage right. segment. So whenever we sit together, yeah. we try to talk and we understand. Yeah. Ya, aap batao what, uh, how do you look at products? How do you make your purchase decisions? Yeah. And I'll tell you from a younger perspective you know as how as me as an audience what do i look at right because uh, mostly for the eld elderly audience it's more about the convenience authenticity uh, etc right or call product quality for the younger audience it's more about the marketing it's more about the look and feel the aspirational value associated with the products so that's something that uh, really comes with it i would say you know in terms of the difference between uh, our age groups and what uh, comes there the strengths I would say for the uh, older generation of entrepreneurs, yeah. it's definitely the experience which is worth in gold. Yeah. And for the younger generations, it's energy. That you know. What, they will are, you, what is that one thing you will take from Nimesh? I would say definitely the kind of experience and insights he brings along, but because of his experience of seeing so many companies grow over his lifetime, and you know, most importantly, as we have discussed in our conversation as well, you know, about time being a very important moat for anyone. I would say that in itself is a big factor that, you know, he has seen so many uh, companies, industries, and he knows what could go wrong, what could be the right steps, how to manage stuff. His experience basically. Correct. No, no, you are wrong. I'm still learning. Uh, still learning. Yeah, yeah, everyone is still learning. So that's why, you know, when I met Chetan, I told him as well that my sole purpose is to every time meet a lot of folks, understand from them because there's so much to learn and that's what I do as well, you know, every day I have a 30 minutes calendar where I talk to someone in the ecosystem. Could be a founder, a late stage founder, an early stage founder, could be an operator, etc. Because that really helps to understand that what are the challenges that I can help and what are the challenges which I can seek help from him. Absolutely, absolutely. And what about you, Nimesh? I think, uh, what would you take from Aditya? No, I think... Uh I think he's quite passionate By about By knowing him, whatever, now in little yeah, years. I've not even looked at him so much in the <laughs> Sorry car. for this awkward <laughs> setup. <laughs> we wanted to keep it interesting, but so this became... I can be non-judgmental, right? Huh? No, it helps because I'll be non-judgmental. Ah, okay. right? So sense. I think, no, no, so he has the energy and the passion of what he is building. Yeah. Right? And, and of course, he has his head in the right place. Yeah. So that I can understand because uh, I think more or less he's aligned with a lot of things that I have said as well. Yeah. Uh, which I believe is the right way to build any kind of business that you are building. It takes time. Yeah. So I am happy that he is young. Yeah. He has time by his side. Yeah. Uh, and I hope he doesn't get carried away by the uh, Lamborghinis and Ferraris on the road in <laughs> Delhi. Yeah. Uh, and tries to hasten up the process. Correct, correct. He can't go to the artisans in that car. Uh, for sure. At the end of the day, I am a Baitanwala only. Yeah. Humble Baitanwala. So, good story there, but I think uh, now it's the time, uh, we're just concluding in five minutes. Aditya, anything you want to ask, uh, you know, him specifically around your business, uh, just feel free because that would help you as well and might as well the other founders who are building. Right. Uh, I would say, you know, uh, I would just want to know what is that 
big mistake that usually most founders make after raising funds from an external investor right because a lot of times this becomes a very transitional stage right that your seed round can either make you or break you mm. right so in your experience you must have seen so many companies and considering that you invest in early stage right so what would be your one piece of advice let's say for founders like me who are just in the process of transitioning from a bootstrap startup to a funded startup so investors really understand the business is very well mm. okay but uh, sorry the founders not investors but i think one thing is is allocation of capital is very important and which is where i think they lose out uh, they make mistakes they don't don't lose out is not the right word they make mistakes sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so the allocation of capital i think you know use some of the basic thumb rules mm. that we have on allocation of capital is that uh, every rupee you spend right what are you getting for it maybe qualitative or quantitative hmm. right what is the roi every employee you hire what is the roi on that hmm. i think if this basic is built into your uh, analysis and your workings on why you are raising capital and what are you going to use the capital for i think that will make a lot of sense uh, instead of what we have seen in the past i think i have seen people hiring a very big team before even the capital is coming hmm. and then having to fire them right i have seen uh, things where people have spent lakhs of rupees on events without even thinking about what are they going to get out of it hmm. right i have seen uh, founders uh, spending a lot of money on marketing without even the product right yeah. in place so i think you need to allocate the capital right what are each, what is the building block of your business yeah. allocate the capital right i think that is the one thing i would advise so i think a great insight right great question as well uh, so aditya what thing do you see if you don't see yourself as a red flag but you know you might see that investors might see as a red flag and should work on i will need to understand the business more yeah whatever you know in this space or d2c in general or maybe something for you should work gen- on for generally in the next 6 months yeah. so something you should work so on so i think it is it is about i think product i believe is in place after mm. seeing that uh, i think it's it's all about how are you going to market and distribute it maybe yeah. online channel offline channel what is the best strategy there what is your best roi there yeah i think that is what uh, would take you to the next level right mm. uh, growth will come your target should not be 100% growth or whatever be the number your mm-hmm. target is how do you utilize your available resources the right way yeah so that you have a right balance of marketing and distribution so ultimately that is what will lead to large growth in the future makes sense super helpful so we can conclude this now by uh, aditya the only condition i told you you'll have to sing uh, the song so this is a song about your brand is very relevant we have so made our version i don't know how much you will understand but it's a very famous old punjabi singer he can probably translate some and this is something uh, to give a background the jo raste mein log aate the and the people who used to do tinning they used to give this sound they used to this is this used to be their chant jaise sabzi wale bolte na sabzi le lo waisa hi das ki bhande kali kar first we we'll listen then you translate a little कली करा लो मतलब टिनिंग टिन कोटिंग ऑन द प्रोडक्ट सो दैट ब्रास इज सेफ फॉर कुकिंग भांडे इज बर्तन राइट भांडे इज आर यूटेंसिल इंटरेस्टिंग दिस वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड बट समथिंग इज सेइंग आलू कुछ लाया राइट right? बेसिकली मैं लुधियाने से टिन लेके आया वो जो पाउडर होता है टू कोट द यूटेंसिल्स नाइस भांडे कली करा लो पांडे 